Welcome to Michigan Reimagined, a spotlight podcast. And here's your host, Chris Buck. So if you're anything like me, you enjoy live music, great art, community events. But sadly, I need to travel out of mid-Michigan to Grand Rapids or Detroit to see some of the things that I'm interested in. But I am thrilled to host our next guest who will share the newly announced Ovation Music and Arts Center coming to Lansing. So please welcome the director of the Lansing Public Media Center, Mr. Dominic Cochran. Welcome, Dom. Thanks, Chris. Glad to be here. So, you know, first, I, I didn't really understand the Lansing Public Media Center and that it existed and what it does. So share with the audience here who may not be familiar, what is the Lansing uh, Public Media Center? Sure. It's the new model that, that, you know, everyone's heard of the public access facility. Uh, those used to be operated by the cable companies. And about 10 years ago, the city uh, took over those operations in exchange for the ability the cable companies were able to close down their facilities, which they never wanted to run in the beginning, <laughs> which is why when you hear the words public access, people have a very clear idea of the quality level to expect. And our whole goal for the last 10 years has been to kind of turn that on its head and provide professional tools for people to come in and make really high quality productions. Okay. So so we're a public access facility that anybody can come and learn how to to tell stories and make videos and film. And is it the city of Lansing? Yes. The city, it's a department of the city of Lansing, uh, but we're located out on 2500 South Washington at the old Michigan National Guard Armory. That Hmm. was always meant to be a temporary location and I couldn't have asked for a better temporary location. I mean, it's truly great. Um, we have like 10,000 square feet of clear span uh, where we can do like television production and stuff like that. It's really wow. great. And do you televise like Lansing City Council meetings and is that kind of part of yeah. it? Yeah, so there's it... two arms to what we do. We have the the city TV side of what we do, which is where we produce all the content for the city, like making shows for Parks and Recreation and the Fire Department and Police Department, City Council meetings, as you mentioned. Uh, then we have the public facing part of what we do, which is another 24 hour channel, which is where anyone, you or um, anybody can come and borrow equipment and produce television content for the public channel. Wow. All right. So now there, there's there's been discussion about a performing arts center here in Lansing for years and years. I moved here in 2008, and I think it was already kind of, in, you know, uh, being discussed. Uh, Over but, 20 years. <laughs> yeah. So now it's 2022, and um, it seems like we're ready to go, which we'll talk about. But w- w- what was your role? How did you get involved in kind of shepherding this project through? Well, it, the original plan when Dave Hollister was mayor, um, when the Civic Center was closed, the the plan was to, that obviously housed a convention type business and also a concert business, right? So uh, the plan when the Civic Center closed was to build the Lansing Center was not the only replacement. The, the Lansing Center was supposed to be the convention side of that business. And then uh, we were going to build the Performing Arts Center, actually now where the stadium district departments are across okay. from the stadium. Uh, so that was going to go from just being the Civic Center to having two great facilities. The Lansing Center was going to be convention, and then this Performing Arts Center downtown would handle the artistic and concert side. Um, I, I have the feasibility study from way back then, 23 years ago, 1999, uh, in my office, uh, two bankers' box full of information saying that it was a yes then, that our community would have supported a, commu- a Performing Arts Center back then, uh, just it's always a money question, right? So where was the money going to come from? That just the money didn't get raised at that point. It was like the dot com crash happened around then too. You know, like financing kind of fell apart. Um, so it's just been a conversation that has had peaks and valleys over that last twenty years. So that that's when it started, and that was the plan then. So it's basically just my role has been to kind of keep that conversation happening over that time and when the time is right to make it happen. So what's happened recently or, or reasonably recently, <clears throat> you know, what was initiated, what group of stakeholders kind of got together? How did this rallying cry begin? Was there? Sure. A, the, yeah. The, the reason it got really serious at one point was because the funding mechanism that funds the Lansing public media center is called peg fees. If you look at your cable bill, you'd see like, you know, 40 cents a month or something. Peg stands for public education and government. And um, the city of Lansing negotiated an extra 2% uh, based on the revenue of those cable companies in the city uh, that are peg fees that go to the city. It's restricted by state statute that we must use those for capital investments only in expanding uh, 
public access. So we basically have to use it to build a new media center. <laughs> right. uh, if we do it for any, if we spend it on anything else, we're in violation of state statute. So, um, or equipment, of course, too. We can use it to purchase equipment, not just facilities. But um, so that revenue trickles in year over year. And we always had still kept the conversation going about somehow building a concert venue downtown uh, or anywhere in the city. And the the kind of game changing moment, I guess, was when we realized we can probably just bond against that to capture a big chunk of it up front. Right. Instead of letting it trickle <clears> in <throat> over time and save it up. Uh, so then we started running those estimates and that was about four years ago and figuring out how much we could probably capture based on that revenue. And we came up with a about $8 million that we thought would be a conservative amount that we could bond against and that doesn't impact the city's general fund whatsoever. So, um, so of course now once you have $8 million, then the, the conversation got really serious. So that's right. when people started kind of becoming attracted to the project. Um, and the fundraising became a lot more feasible. So as far as stakeholders, we've had the mayor's arts commission, um, under this administration, he formed the Arts Commission, and we have a facilities committee, and those people have been working really diligently for the last few years, uh, paying for a feasibility study, fundraising feasibility study, market and economic impact studies, and the answer continues to be yes, 22 years later, Nice <laughs> that we need this and it will succeed. So Okay. So, um, you know, music and arts venue can take a lot of shapes and forms and be in a lot of places. You know, how did you figure out what this facility needed to be, you know, to, to serve the, either the most people or the right people. Like, how did you get opinions as to what this, this facility should look like and operate like? Sure. So um, we went in with the, the <clears throat> hope and the goal of building, you know, not only a, a facility that would attract people from around our region, but that would be truly a, a jewel in the entire Midwest. And it, it's great to have lofty goals. And we thought it would be amazing to build something that could, house the Lansing Symphony Orchestra one night and then have a seating system that folds into the floor via hydraulics and turns into a flat floor venue so you could have the symphony perform one night and then like a heavy metal or hip hop concert the right, next right, night. You right. know, that was the goal. Um, and we found out very quickly that that goal would cost about $60 million to build. So we commissioned a fundraising feasibility study to see if it was feasible to build a facility like that. Other cities do build them all the time. So we thought, why not here? Um, we commissioned that fundraising feasibility study and determined that we don't probably have the appetite to raise that kind of money in the private, you know, like corporate philanthropy dollars yep. in Lansing. But we were told by the firm who we hired to do the market feasibility <clears throat> study, the AMS planning and research, who we selected them because they have a reputation for being conservative. They don't just tell cities what they want to hear. They'll tell you, no, you're crazy. Don't build this because it's going to turn into a boondoggle. You know, they will right, tell right. you that, which is what we needed to hear. They'll tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. <laughs> so um, they were telling us all along that, you know, of course, if you can raise the money, you should build this facility that you're imagining. That would be amazing, you know, but you have to have an appetite not only to raise that kind of money, but those facilities always operate in the red. They always require an ongoing annual subsidy. That one was going to end up being around $600,000 a year. Of course, many people have different opinions about that. My personal opinion is that's a worthy investment because it's also going to create $15 million of economic impact every year. Right. Um, so that's why cities do still build those facilities. But um, we determined that we don't really have the appetite to build a facility that's going to require that kind of operating subsidy. So um, they were telling us all along that you know, what you really need, the true gap in the market here in Lansing is that flat floor venue that all the people are driving to Grand Rapids and Detroit to go see, you know, rock and country and hip hop shows all the time. Just like I've been doing myself for the right. last 25 yeah. years. Uh, they identified that they knew just from their market study that that's what we needed. So they said the entire time we wanted to build that larger facility, they were telling us if you just drop, you know, see if you can raise the money. If you can't, you should try to build this flat floor more of a concert type venue instead of a true fully. You know, this isn't going to house Broadway concerts like the Wharton does. Um, those facilities are really expensive to build. So we um, they said that you'll capture the vast majority of the economic impact of that $60 million facility if you just build a $20 million version of that. So the ROI in terms of the citizens of Lansing and, and all of us is certainly much higher if you only spend 20 million and get almost the same return on that investment as you would with a 60 million dollar right. investment. So that's where we kind of went back to the drawing board and we came back with us. So 
Got it. Okay. So now you get that news and, and it sounds like that sets your sights on what you want to do and where the, the sweet spot is for investment and return on that investment. Yeah. How do you, how did the process go on figuring out, you know, how to create it? Right. I mean, so is it a uh, existing building that gets retrofitted for this use? Is it a ground up construction? I mean, how did that process go? Yeah. So that was the thanks to the facilities committee with the mayor's arts commission. It was a great group of people who we explored lots of different options um, adaptive reuse was obviously the first thought that people had, you know, if you drive around even like the small towns around Michigan, right? Like Grand Ledge and yeah. do, like uh, uh, most of these towns have a historic theater that's either been renovated or is sitting there waiting to be renovated in downtown Lansing. We've had as many as eight at any given time, but they've all been just completely changed beyond like they're not, they're not sitting there as a hollow hull ready to renovate, right? Okay. Like, like we have in a lot, they've just been architecturally completely changed beyond recognition. So you can't even really turn it back into a theater. So um, having explored all those options about, you know, possible adaptive reuse, um, especially, and then now with the way the construction industry is going uh, in terms of materials and labor, like the, the projects that are ground up are getting, are the ones that are getting done on time and on budget. Hmm. Not, you know, that's just the nature of the, so, but what's interesting about this area that we're, I'm sure we'll discuss the exact location is it's actually a hybrid. So it involves, there's an existing building on the block that will be completely renovated and rehabbed into the offices for both the Lansing Public Media Center and also any other organizations that will be a part of it. Okay. And then we'll build onto that building uh, will be the, the music venue part, the concert venue part. Well, let's dive in. Where is it? So what we're looking at is the... 500 block of South Washington. So when you come off the highway, this is something that's always driven me crazy as a advocate for downtown and a resident. It's just like, sometimes it's the first thing you see of our city. That's the exit that says downtown Lansing. Yep. If you're a visitor going to a convention at the Lansing center, you get off downtown Lansing exit, you come off and you turn right there and there's just an empty block. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, Oh, am I downtown? Where am I? <laughs> so, uh, that's kind of been, a, a gap in the smile there of, of downtown Lansing. So it's the, right there, that block when you um, one block north of 496. And so we also think that this it's, it, it will help bridge Rio town and downtown okay. also, because yep. there's a lot of momentum in Rio town. So it will begin that process of, you know, and there's going to be apartments also there where the Rio town sign is on the South uh, East corner of right. 496 in Washington. So once you get, add some more residential density in there and also create this entertainment district uh, with both this project and also the one a couple blocks north, there's going to be another concert venue downtown. Right. That's totally complementary to this project, actually. OK, not in terms competitive. Of ca- capacity. Right. So um, it's really going to be great. And the way the timeline will work with that is cool, too, because they're going to be open this year, um, you know, with a 500 to 700 person capacity they're going to start that process of building that momentum and getting people back downtown, getting people to realize we have entertainment options downtown. And then best case scenario, if this ovation project breaks ground tomorrow, which it won't, it's going to be two years of construction, right? Right, So, so there's time for that momentum to build before the doors even open for this. And we have to think ahead. You know, if we, if we wait until that kind of momentum comes back to downtown before we even begin the process, then we're going to be way behind everyone right, else. Right. So. so Ovation, what a great name. I mean, it's, it's kind of <laughs> logical, but I'm sure there was a lot of discussion and heartache as to what to actually call this thing. Who came up with Ovation? And uh... I, I'm not big on taking credit, but I can take credit for that <laughs> one. It was, it was, came out of the, uh, just the conversation of needing, of needing a, a title for the project instead of just like saying pack short for performing arts center was just so like, you know, <laughs> not exciting. <laughs> right? Yeah. So it was kind of like, just started as just the need to have even like not really a code name, but just a name for the working, project, yeah, right? working, so title. working title. Um, so it was, it was just a working title that just people actually really responded to and ended up really enjoying. And it provides flexibility because we do have, we're going to have some naming opportunities. We do have a fundraising gap that we do need to raise uh, some private dollars. So that can be compatible with like a, if it was a business that came along and wanted to um, kind of enjoy that number one naming right spot it can be like the ovation by or you know yep. it has the potential to be a lot of these venues kind of just use the address and they're like 20 monroe live and grand rapids which those are kind of fun too but we just wanted something a little bit more imaginative so. right oh that's great that's great so you know downtown lansing certainly in a state of flux right the pandemic has wreaked havoc on the office users yeah. in the state of michigan you know employees are not in on a given day and 
the coattail effects of that kind of governmental supply chain not being right. active in downtown has made the retail folks obviously struggle with keeping their restaurants and you know there's you know the the the, the stores that are uh, relying on that kind of traffic. But now there's an influx of residential opportunities. You mentioned the one down on Rio Town. I think the Lake Trust building is being retrofitted into apartments with some additional construction. There's two or three other big, uh, and they're booming. Is yeah. my, my point is, is that residential booming, office is a little bit down. Before office was booming and there were no was, was living here after five o'clock and on the weekends. <clears throat> Do you think, and, and is, the, is, uh, is the city kind of bullish on the idea of the ovation really? maybe helping be that vibrancy boost that's needed to encourage more people to come and live and stay downtown and maybe even enjoy, you know, staying at the office and change in their, you know, in their office and walk down to, to an event in an evening. I mean, how does this all kind of go at, uh, work together yeah. from a statewide vibrancy or a citywide vibrancy program? Certainly. So the conversation kind of changed, you know, with the pandemic and people working from home, it, it was a it was a yes before that we needed this, um, and it, it remains a yes. We've had AMS has continued to do um, audience research in terms of demand, like whether people do want to, in fact, enjoy a concert. We saw last summer when we had like blockade downtown. I mean, it was right. huge, right? So like people, the pen, the demand is pent up and it's there. People still want to enjoy entertainment, live entertainment. There's nothing that can replace live music, and um, so it kind of turned the conversation was always like we need a project like this to help revitalize downtown and grow downtown and the conversation turned to you know it's a pill that's hard to swallow but it was like we need a project like this to help save downtown right frankly yeah and um residential is the key to that that's also kind of an interesting component of this project is we actually have a residential component to this project and that is a uh, live workspace for artists, which is another gap in the market that we just don't have here. So if you're like kind of an up and coming artist, you can rent one of these studios that would be a space you can live in and work in both. Hmm. So you kind of have a savings there of not needing to also rent a studio space. Um, so that residential is really going to be the key. We know that and that the demand is there, as you said. And these are my, to me, it's a talent retention question, honestly. When, we're, when we go talk to these potential funders about supporting a project like this, I talk to people who intern at the media center, sometimes like MSU students, you know, sometimes people don't even take the question seriously. If you say, are you planning on staying in Lansing when you're done with school and like starting a family and buying a house? And they're just like, we don't have the amenities that some of their most fond memories of their college years are those nights that they drove to Grand Rapids and Detroit. And saw the best shows of their life, right? right. So when they look back at their time in college, that's what they're remembering. And it's not in Lansing. So we don't have these amenities that young people expect and demand. Um, so I, to me, I think it's going to be a key to talent retention and growth both. Right. Couldn't agree more. And that's why I'm such a fan and wanted to have, have you on cool. the show because I'm very excited for this to be a part of our worlds. So you talk about if, if we broke around tomorrow, it would take two years, but that's not going to happen. So what hurdles are in front of you? So we do have, uh, so the nice thing about having that kind of housing component, there's a version of the project that we're almost fully funded for, um, where we, if we did not do the housing part, the, the little workspace for artists, um, we're very close to just having between the significant and amazing investment that the state of Michigan has made. Uh, thanks once again to Senator Hertel and Representative Sarah Anthony, uh, for advocating for downtown Lansing in that process. And we have a $2 million investment from the city, $8 million, I'm sorry, $2 million from the state, $8 million from the city in the form of peg fees that we discussed. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a version of the project. If we did go, went very stripped down and only built the venue, we could probably be very close to breaking ground soon. But I think we need to be more, be more bold. I think we need to think 20 years into the future. I think if we add this housing component, it's very similar to what the Allen Neighborhood Center is doing down on Kalamazoo, where right. they added apartments on top of their operation. Whoever's running that place in 20 years is going to look back and thank God for Joan Nelson <laughs> that she built that because, right. you know, think about how powerful that is to have, um, in her case, a, a, a food kind of nonprofit um, operation and neighborhood center to have housing help sustain that operation is super powerful. Same with arts and culture. It's the same thing. If the 20 years from now you get some of that debt service paid down from building apartments and the NOI starts trickling down to the bottom line of an arts and cultural facility, that's going to make a very strong financial position 
for the type of um, facility that doesn't often have a strong financial right, position. Right. That's great. So now, so uh, I apologize to, to no. really answer your question. Yes, we would like to build that version. We think that's the smart thing for the future for the community. So, um, to that end, we ha- we would like we're going out to try to raise around five million dollars in private yeah. uh, corporate philanthropy <clears throat> dollars. Do the extra work, slow yeah. and right's better than fast and wrong. Yeah, you don't want to regret. And, and yeah. we have a fundraising feasibility study that says that is a realistic number. That forty million dollar number was not realistic right, in Lansing right. at this time, but five million is. So that's kind of perfect. What we're at. Yep. Well, how can people learn more about the ovation? Is there any place where they can go and see some of this chatter or renderings? Yeah, we're, or? we're actually working on right now a splash page on the city website that has some of like we want to just be really transparent and share those feasibility studies and all of that with everyone. We're working on a page on the city website, so just keep an eye on that. I would just, for now, keep an eye on the social media for the Lansing Public Media Center as well as the city of Lansing. Um, We also hope, one other thing is some of those partner organizations, we're looking at possibly having the Lansing Art Gallery and Education Center and all of the above Hip Hop Academy being a part of this project because we have found that our missions are really aligned but don't overlap very much. So to have this be a space that's super busy during the day could be great, too. So I'd keep an eye on all that social media for all those organizations. Wonderful. All right. Well, we've been talking to the director of Lansing Public Media Center, Dominic Cochran, on the Ovation Project coming to downtown Lansing. Thanks for joining me today, Dom. Thank you. 